everybody in today's episode i would like to share with you my thoughts on a car rather an suv now it has enjoyed being the darling of the jet set in pakistan for many years before it was ousted by the likes of land cruisers prados and fortuners but some people still swear by them welcome everybody to my mitsubishi pajero 2004 First off a little history the Pajero line was introduced by Mitsubishi in 1982 the first gen was from 1982 till 1991 the second gen was from 1991 till 1999 the third gen was from 1999 till 2006 and the current fourth gen was from 2006 till date the one you see here is the third gen model from 2004 As you all might know that the Pajero has had a bad reputation among auto enthusiast community and that was earned by the lackluster and frankly bad first gen Pajero. That SUV was underpowered, drove like a toddler learning to walk and if you showed it any kind of hill road hill it just gave up and died. It was that bad. body roll and bad build quality did not help matters any Mitsubishi tried to improve things with the second gen but as you can see from the pictures it was styled by someone inspired by the Russian Lada but that was only the case with the early models later on it did achieve a very rugged look still a looker it was not but it was a step in the right direction and also it brought many firsts for the company it was the first to introduce multi mode abs and what mitsubishi called the super select four wheel drive or the active track four wheel drive this gave the driver many low range options such as the 2h 4h 4h lc and 4 llc Another advantage of this second gen system was that it gave the driver the ability to switch between two wheel drive and full time four wheel drive at speeds up to 100 km per hour whereas the first gen Pajero had to be stationary to switch from rear wheel drive to four wheel drive Mitsubishi did introduced many innovative firsts in the market with this second gen Pajero So now we come to the third gen Pajero where things really started to get interesting. After you take a look at the SUV you will get to know that this is where the product really started to get mature with better looks, better technology. It is a good off-road option. The SS4 system is further refined as bevel gears have been replaced by planetary ones. The system was also made fully electronic which meant the vehicle didn't have to be in gear to switch between the drive modes. After all the upgrades the system was renamed to Super Select 4 Wheel Drive 2 or the SS4 2. Alongside rack and pinion steering as opposed to the recirculating ball system on previous generations the Pajero also offered a choice of three transmissions a 5 speed manual a 4 speed automatic and a 5 speed triptonic the vehicle itself was completely redesigned inside and out and had a lower and wider stance a lower center of gravity meant that the pajero had better on road handling manners and the newer body had over 300% more torsional rigidity The biggest change to bring about this was that the Pajero utilized a unibody construction as opposed to the previous body on frame the box ladder thing. This also permitted a longer suspension stroke. The fuel tank was also relocated to between the axles for better safety. The third gen Pajero moved one size up from the mid-size to full-size SUV. Mitsubishi had transformed the Pajero into a very formidable off-road machine. Unfortunately, it is still a favorite of the rich boy racers, not racers, mind you, who like to take it and completely screw the wheel suspension geometry by putting insane low profile tires and really insane but usually ugly wheels to complete the desi gangsta look. Sad but true. 
However, with its many low range options in stock specs or with sensible modifications, it is a very capable off-road machine. Let's move on to the front to have a look. You can lock and unlock the car remotely through these buttons in the fob. Silver accent on the door handle that looks really nice. This combination of beige, black and grey looks really nice. And this is a soft touch material, leather, it has power windows and this silver accented panel that looks really nice, silver uh, door handle as well, storage in the door. The steering wheel has tilt adjustment but it does not have any telescopic adjustment and the driver seat is six way electrically adjustable through these buttons and it has height adjustment as well. So drivers with different heights should be able to find a comfy driving position. One negative is that it does this driver seat does not have any lower lumbar support. Electric power side mirror and they are retractable as well. Fog lamp. Top and bottom part of the steering is finished in wood. It looks like shisham but it's some sort of a Japanese wood that looks really nice. But the negative is that at times in hot season it becomes slippery. So when you are turning the uh, steering it becomes a little bit dangerous. So you have to be careful about it and you have to hold the steering with this side bolstering. It has simple and easy to read instrument cluster with speedo on the left and it also shows up audiometer and trip meter A, trip meter B. So it this vehicle has done 182,901 kilometers and on the right hand side it has this tachometer and gear shift selector as well. In the middle there are four gauges, on the top you can see there is a fuel gauge and on the left. Uh, on the right uh, you can see coolant temperature gauge down below is a four wheel drive indicator which shows you um, which mode you are in actually and on the right hand side you can see there is a door open indicator for example if i open the driver door you can see so this is quite good and here is a small button uh, which is meant for headlamp washer. I'll show you later on in this video. Now moving on to the left, it has this multi information display screen which shows up different parameter. For example, it shows date and time. And on the right top, you can see temperature. It is showing 35 degrees Celsius at, at the moment and it is a pretty warm day. Uh, it shows up climate control settings as well and still you can see the thermometer time and date and uh, here is a digital compass in the middle and barometer on the left uh, which shows the air pressure and altitude meter on the right which shows that we are 600 meter above the sea level so if you are in an adventure it is uh, a pretty convenient feature to have and that's it down below is a, a convenient storage pocket and here is a radio cassette player and a CD changer as well. It has six CD changer down below. Uh, this system has a nice sound quality but it is uh, like you are listening to FM 106.2. Let's change it to 89. So it does have good quality uh, of sound but it is in my opinion it is obsolete to date and it should be updated but it was not very updated for uh, 2004 when this uh, vehicle was manufactured. Down below is uh, automatic climate control, uh, here is a zone selector, here is fan speed in the middle and temperature control on the right. And 
moving down and the, here is the 6 cd changer which i told you earlier his, here is a 12 volt power outlet it also has the lighter which is lying in the center console i guess here is the ashtray and here is the button for the aerial which you can uh, through which you can control the aerial and here is a air conditioning control for the rear passengers you can switch it on or off from here and in other countries it was also offered with heated seat as well uh, this is the place for heated seat buttons and here is the four speed automatic gearbox it also has this triptronic functionality as well uh, which is pretty convenient while going uphill or downhill here is a handbrake and this is the uh, four wheel drive selector uh, it has two high, four high. Uh, in normal conditions, you can drive the vehicle on road uh, in two edge or four edge. Obviously, all of us uh, prefer it to be on two edge. That is rear wheel drive. And here is four high lock center, and this is four low lock center. In these two modes, uh, it is not recommended to drive the vehicle normally on road. And this is for a four H L C is meant for off-roading in sand or snow or things like that and if the situation is getting serious you can switch it to 4 LLC like if it is um, some sort of a serious off-roading or steep uphill or downhill or anything like that when you change uh, between different modes you can see it in the uh, indicator four-wheel drive indicator on the instrument cluster and uh, now it is 4 HLC and you can see the center part is in orange that is the center diff locked and this is a uh, low gearing with central differential locked so you can't see it because uh, it should be in neutral now you can see 4 L so this is it here is another um, convenient storage pocket uh, to hold your coins or something like that it is two cup holders for the driver and front passenger and let me move it here is storage oh it's full of change i'm a pretty rich man i think and uh, you can use it as an armrest as well it can be moved forward or backward and here is deep storage with 12 volt power outlet as well and here is the lighter okay so there are two glove box one on the top uh, this one is smaller in size and you can store your documents or things like that here is another glove box down below and it is uh, pretty de decently sized These rear seats have been designed to accommodate three people in comfort. Although four people of my size are easily possible, there are three seat belts, and despite being 4x4, four four, there is hardly any transmission tunnel. So, even if you get the middle seat, there is somewhere to place your feet. Another good thing is that there is armrest for the rear passenger with a stylish cup holder as well. Another good thing is that there are separate air conditioning vents for all three rows and there is a separate climate control for the rear air conditioning system as well and there is an ashtray as well for the rear passengers in order to access the third row seats you need to fold down the second row seats which is a two-step process you need to pull this handle like this and then there is a pull tab at the back of this second row seats which is an awkward position you have to move your hand like this and you have to fold the seats like this and now you can get to the rear seats speaking about the third row seats as you can see the leg room is limited and headroom is adequate to accommodate people of my height that is 5'9 so taller people will find it a hard time sitting here especially if you are traveling over a long distance there are two seat belts for the rear passengers and uh, I would have to say that these seats are best suited to children and we will take some feedback from kids as well uh, the good part is that there are air conditioning vents for the rear passengers which makes the environment a little bit accommodating and there are two cup holders and a secret pocket as well.
So, Abdullah, how do you feel sitting in this third row seats? I feel very comfy sitting here. Although there isn't too much leg room, the headroom is very nice. The best thing about the third row seats is that the AC that works very good. Okay, that's good. And Rahim, how do you feel sitting in this third row seats? Uh, I feel very comfy and I like this big sunroof so much. Oh, this big sunroof would be liked by many, especially the kids. Let us check out the trunk space now. The spare wheel has been mounted on the trunk door and it has this spoiler that looks really nice. It also comes up with this rear wiper which is very useful. The side opening door may be problematic in tight parking spaces or if anything is parked right behind you. And it has pockets in the rear door as well. There is tremendous amount of boot space even if you are traveling over long distances you can carry lots of luggage inside this vehicle and if you have requirement to carry seven people on the vehicle there are two seats that are hidden underneath you can fold them uh, unfold them dead easy just remove this cover and there are two seats well these seats are in use this storage compartment can be used for carrying luggage which is really smart and if you have requirement to carry bulkier objects this second and third row seats can be folded to allow a remarkable amount of space the engine is 2.8 liter turbo diesel it is a single overhead cam engine that produces 123 horsepower at 4000 rpm and 294 newton meters of torque at 2000 rpm meaning very good low range torque it has two valves per cylinder and 21 to 1 ratio compression ratio this 2.8 liter diesel engine was retained only for developing markets whereas in other countries it was upgraded to 3.2 liter 16 valve direct injection engine producing around 163 horsepower. Now let us start up the engine. You need to turn the ignition key. Put your foot on the brake. Now let us take this thing for a test drive and see how does it drive like. So uh, first of all let's talk about the seating position. These front seats are quite comfortable and the seating position is very good. But as I mentioned earlier it does not have any lower lumbar support and I wish if it had it. Wind noise is well controlled and all around visibility is very good and you do have a commanding view of the traffic ahead which is very good and that makes the driving really easy okay so now moving on to the suspension part now speaking about suvs road feel is never lively but the pajero's rack and pinion type steering is predictable and it has sufficient response to know where the front wheels are pointing to and one of the good thing about this Pajero is that it has fully independent suspension for all four wheels that provides a smooth and reasonably comfortable ride. Even if you are driving on unpaved rural village roads, the ride quality is not bad. There is some body roll going around the corners, but overall the suspension is soft and compliant. Brakes on the Pajero are good at doing their job and it has big ventilated discs both front and back along with ABS. Okay, so moving on to the engine part. Speaking about this 2.8 liter turbo diesel engine, the first thing you would notice is that it is noisy and it has sluggish response to the throttle input. And if you are traveling on a motorway or a highway and you want to overtake, sometimes you have to wait for the gearbox to downshift the gears and the turbo to spool up for quicker acceleration. That's one negative. Overall, 
it is a old design engine but it is good at doing its job and overall it is an effective package i would have to say it returns 7 kilometers per liter within the city use and 10 kilometers per liter on highway run so if you are looking for a mid-sized suv for your family i would recommend that you seriously consider this vehicle Let's put things in perspective. Mitsubishi introduced a lot of new technology in its Pajero line, such as the multi-mode ABS and the very capable SS4 system. Systems that were industry leading at that time. They started that usable two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive revolution and brought it to masses. Since then, they have only improved it. Why not give it a try and check it out? You will not be disappointed. I know that because I have tried it. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please leave a comment and stay tuned for upcoming reviews of new cars.